Welcome everyone, let's get started. Hi, my name is Nesri, I'm a seventh grade East student and I've been in East, at, this is my first year in East. My name is Morelli, I'm in sixth grade and I've been in East for four years. And as you can see, East stands for Education Accelerant by Service and Technology. And this is our East team. On our first day of our week, we start out in a circle. Our East room has sort of a living room for all of us to join in. We often start by checking in with each other using the zones of regulation. Some of us share just one word to describe how we're doing. Others share more. Shock. Nervous. Nervous. Curious. Curious. Agonizing. That is how we felt in the beginning of the year when everything started. We started planning. Desperate. Shock. Nervous. You're good, you're good. We started planning our cor cornerstone application video and realized just how much our opportunities and experience East, um, wait. We started planning our cornerstone application video and realized just how much our experiences and opportunities helped us overcome with COVID related obstacles. Living through a pandemic has forced all of us to go through unbelievable circumstances. The week before t 20, 20, the spring before 2020, what happened changed our world forever. We, we felt, felt you're good, you're good. Just play the video. desperate, shocked, nervous, nervous. nervous. curious, agonizing, concerned, scared, scared. Cautious. cautious, anxiety, overwhelmed, worried, worried. frustrated. This year, only 17 of our 7th grade Kelly Knight students started their year on reading grade level. According to our MAP and ACT Aspire assessment in the spring of the previous year, only 24 of our 6th grade students started their reading grade level in August. <laughs> next slide, next slide. Students at J.L. Kelly and around the school district had found themselves behind in their academic skills. Our East facilitator has had to restructure the way that we have started learning this year. We spent nearly two months learning how to research with our reading skills. Our East facilitator has had to restructure the way that we have started learning this year. We spent nearly two months learning how to research with our reading skills. Now, not only has East helped all of us become better researchers, it gave all of us the confidence to build on our strengths and strengthen our weaknesses. At the start of the year, we all spent time learning to be better researchers. We also gained skills and close reading and watching for information. Before I was in East, the first thing I did when I was researching was clicking on the first website I ever saw. Now we evaluate resources before we spend time on them. Now we learned that problems that we thought only affected us are actually affecting people around the world. For the last two years, our education has been disrupted by COVID. Last year, only some of our students came to school in person all five days. Some students were only here in person two days a week. Students had to come Students had to overcome sudden change from at-home learning the year before. For many reasons, students here at Joe Kelly, as well as around the world, found themselves behind in academic skills. When we first experienced AMI work, or alternative method of instruction, it was a major adjustment. Hi, my name is Hayden Head, and I'm very happy to be a part of this year's um, conference team. Uh, what challenges did you face at the beginning of AMI? The challenges I faced was uh, doing doing it at home, just because it felt a little like weird. My family, we don't have Wi-Fi; we can't afford it, 
So we had to get hotspot for our phones, which at the time it was free, but it was still like, it wasn't as good as Wi-Fi because we ha I had to share it with my two brothers. Um, one challenge is um, not knowing what to do it with my work and um, the hard questions that we didn't learn on when we first started um, fourth grade. In the beginning, I, I was confused. I didn't know what to do, where I was supposed to be. I've challenged um, sleeping problems a bit and getting on time, getting my work done on time. Like missing Zooms because you're sleeping yeah. in. Yeah. All the skills we get in East help us help our community. We also have a chance to gain tech skills that otherwise would be out of our reach. These skills are not just useful in our East class and with our East projects. We use the skills gained in East to be more productive in all areas of our day. East this year that helped you be more successful during AMI. Uh, one thing that East has helped me with AMI is technology because I've learned more with computers, so I've gotten better on researching. Um, well, in East we learn about self-direct learning and how to learn on your own. So I think that really helped during the AMI days. The skill I gained this year was um, uh, <laughs> asking questions to teachers and and telling them what I need help on. It, it helped me gain self-confidence and just the, the ability to do my work by myself. I like partnership. Uh, this year that helped you be more successful during AMI. We are allowed to use our East time to pursue a project path or a tech skill acquisition. Often the tech skills lead us to a project. And as you can see, when you walk into the classroom, students are already on their projects. They're working on it immediately. Okay. During the first few months of school, we learned how to research. We did a lot of building team activities and started identifying what our personal interests were. A few projects were actually formed from those first brainstorming activities. Others developed as we had time to research about our um, passions and interests. Next, we will hear about two projects. Notice how East at our school promotes student growth inside and outside of our East program. I'm Carson Hayter. I saw some of um, my fellow classmates struggle with some things that were pretty basic and pretty easy for other students that haven't struggled with those kind of things before. Lots of different schools have coffee shops. I think what makes this one special is that it's not just a coffee shop ran by students with special needs. It is a coffee shop ran by students with special needs alongside general ed students. So they're peer training, they're learning from each other. I received an email from J.O. Kelly Middle School uh, asking about what it would mean to partner with Onyx for a potential coffee project. It wasn't until I came and visited to really get a feel for what their project was that I became impassioned for what they were trying to do, not just as a coffee supplier, but just as another human hearing someone's story and wanting to um, kind of move forward in in whatever way possible I could to help. We got to bring them over to our lab where Dylan and Alika uh, got to teach the kids from seed to cup what coffee is and a thorough hands-on, here's how to brew coffee correctly in whatever uh, brewing method that they uh, were looking to and it, it landed on Chemex. 
You might think that our customers are the teachers at Joe Kelly Middle School, but really it's the special needs students. Whenever they go into the workforce, if they don't have those resources or the training, then it's going to be a struggle for them. So uh, me and my team are hoping to help them learn those skills early on in life so that they can be successful. A big change that I've seen in my students uh, with this program, especially uh, as a self-contained special education teacher, majority of my students spend most of their time with me in my classroom and their fellow classmates. So they don't have a lot of opportunity and time to go into uh, the general ed uh, class with their grade level peers. Uh, a student uh, that I know that's working with the Kelly Coffee Clatch, his confidence has just absolutely gone through the roof. He's willing to, uh, to go uh, and help out other classmates. He's willing to go help out other teachers. He wants, he wants to be involved more in schools, which is something completely different than I saw in him last year as a sixth grader. So this call has really helped a lot. When we started the project, we thought that bus driver shortage was solely Based on our EAST project, students in our EAST program who would like to work on tech skills choose the tech skill acquisition path. Hi, I'm Jocelyn Ott, and I am so happy to be in EAST conference. I'm here with Ms. Farrell, our EAST facilitator. I know many of us work on projects in EAST. But I've noticed some East students are focused on technology skills. Yeah, in our program, um, I give all of our East students the um, choice to either dedicate themselves to a project, and if maybe they're, um, you know, really overwhelmed with all the options of technology to learn in here, and they haven't had an opportunity to use any of this ever before, sometimes it's hard to um, focus on a project. And the great thing about this is usually by the end of the year, students who have spent all their East time um, working on a technology skill are often asked by people doing projects for their help. This year we have students in East independently learning about photography, microcomputers, 3D printing, game design, drones, and much more. Let's hear from a group of students who have been learning about photography. Before our East experience started. Um, when I first started, I didn't really know what love, but I, it wasn't like I had no clue how to like take a picture, but I knew like how to fo make it focus and stuff like that. At the beginning of using the camera, I know how to fo focus it and do all the basic stuff, but I never really knew the advanced settings. Um, at, at the first of the year, I really didn't know anything about cameras. Why did you choose photography? I chose photography because I thought it would be fun to take pictures of. I decided to take, start taking pictures because if I wanted to help in the project, I would like to help them by taking pictures. So I didn't join the project. I decided to learn this first. I decided to do photography because it's a skill that can help you out throughout life. I decided to do photography because I thought it would be really interesting to learn about cameras. Self-directed learning, motivation, organization, and engagement. Um, I decided because I just think about the goal that I set at the start of the year, which would be my big goal that I would hope to get to at the end of the fourth semester or this semester. And I just kind of like get little things that would help me go on to that. And that's how I kind of like picked what I was going to do. So the thing that keeps me going is I put a big goal at the beginning of the year. And, and it's based on a camera. So when using these cameras and learning new things, it's helping me reach that goal. End of the year goal. Outer. My year end goal is to have all the settings on the DSRE camera memorized. That way I don't have to look it up every time. 
What? Mine's kind of like this, but it's um like maybe like next year or something. If I like pick up a camera, I should like basically know almost everything about it and be able to teach others how to use it. Growth and self-directed learning. Based on my yearly goal, I go making, I go doing little things that will help me reach my yearly goal. Uh, so I focus, or I think about my year and goal, and I, if I've already picked something yesterday, what I'm gonna do, I think, is this gonna help me build up to my year and goal? I think that we just really enjoy taking pictures that we just want to get started as soon as we get in. And, and also since we, since we write in journals, when we write in journals, once we go and look through them again, you can see your to-do list and that will tell you what you need to do that week. Each week we start by establishing our weekly goal for us in, in East. We have to think about how our weekly goal will get us closer to our year-long East goal. Then we create a to-do list to get us on track and started with our week. Our journals provide evidence of our learning and have become a resource for us to use. We use the Wellington Engagement Index to evaluate how we're doing in East and in other areas in our lives. Self-awareness about our learning engagement helps us know when and what we need to change about our learning. Using the zones of regulation in a group setting helps us get to know each other. We also can identify our strengths and weaknesses. Knowing our strengths and weaknesses and those of our teammates helps us be more effective. Because of East experience at Joe Kelly, we, we are, are confident, inspired, privileged, successful, excellent, impressed, different, happy, appreciative, special, joyful, beautiful, important, invincible, self-confident, powerful, productive, skilled, out, confident, Thank you for coming. Uh, we are Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly. Hi everybody, how's everyone's conference so far? Hopefully good, right? Everyone's good? Okay. Um, I'm Coley. I'm Caitlin. We're both eighth graders at Lakeside Junior High and we are the cornerstone winner for Project Sophistication and Innovation. We are thrilled to have you here and that we are able to share with you our year this year. We want to start by saying we are honored to share this session and the Cornerstone stage with J.O. Kelly and Northwest Cl Tech Claremore. Um, we want to share the work that we did this year and how we think we used innovative and sophisticated solutions to meet our clients' needs. What a year, right? Th that this has been an incredibly hard year for all of us. We started the year hoping for and expecting things to be normal and we ran into COVID year three-ish. Because of that, our word of the year has been pivot. Almost every one of the projects that we're going to highlight has some sort of pivot. That's the thread that ties our work together. Sometimes we ch had to change directions because we had to. Sometimes because our clients asked. And other times, our ideas just didn't work. We firmly believe that a big part of East and of life in general is the ability to pivot and change directions quickly. For the most part, we believe that we have been able to do that. One place, is, one place where we've found innovative solutions is helping our facilitator and his family. We've worked on a couple projects for him, handles for Henry and put a fork in it. 
With our handles project, we worked with Mr. Stalling's son, Henry, who has developmental delays in both fine and gross motor skills. This particularly shows up in his hands. Henry is double jointed in every joint in his finger, which means when he grabs something and puts pressure on his fingers, normally they collapse. He struggles with this a lot, and because of this, Henry really struggles to open doors at home. He's locked himself in the bathroom more than once. They've tried a couple of the commercially available products, but have found that someone, usually Sarah, Mr. Stalling's wife, just doesn't like them and finds them ugly, or that Henry still has trouble gripping them, or that they just didn't fit well. We knew that we could design something to meet both of their needs and help Henry, so we got to work. We designed a, about a dozen prototypes and ended up printing about five. We sent them home with Mr. Stallings to get, to get approval from both of our clients and came up with, a, with our final design. The design fits the doors, Sarah doesn't hate it, and Henry is able to use it. Henry is using the handles in his bathroom. We're currently adding a few special touches for Henry, engraving some Baby Yoda for fun, dialing an infill so it lasts. We are so excited that we were able to create a custom design that works for Henry and his family. Okay. We've also worked with Mr. Stallings on an adaptive device when he had an incident with a pumpkin and couldn't use his left hand for about four months. The biggest issue was that he couldn't cut his own food. Can you imagine being a middle-aged man and not being able to use a fork and a knife? <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you can imagine, this was an issue for him. So <laughs> we worked to create an adapter that would snap onto a splint that he could hold his fork and a knife. We also ran into the issue that the sleeve that we created wouldn't hold every size of utensil that he was using. So we used grass as our inspiration. We modeled blades of grass on the inside of the sleeve, and they helped to hold the utensil in place regardless of the size. Mr. Stallings is now out of the splint, though we still laugh about his incident, but we are still working. Our initial design did what we wanted, but they weren't perfect. The blades of grass broke off, and they didn't hold the fork as tightly as we liked. We hope to have the Pumpkin Knife 2.0 ready to go by the end of the year. Another project that demonstrates our commitment to innovation is Fish Our Friends. For this project, we went in search of the habitat of the endangered Ozark blind cavefish. We were contacted because a rock quarry was going in near the fish's habitat. Our client, a local landowner, knew that we had the technology and equipment that they didn't and asked us to do periodic assessments of both the fish's habitat and the effect the quarry had on the fish. We started working in ArcGIS. We knew we needed a map to track data every time we gathered it. After multiple trips to the creek, hours of searching, and rewatching old and new drone footage, unfortunately, we were out of luck. We never actually saw a blind catfish. Despite our best, our best efforts, the quality just wasn't good enough. We did, however, find evidence of their food source and have enough to continue to believe that there were cavefish. So what's next? Our idea wasn't working, so we either needed to let the client know or figure out how to pivot. So we pivoted. We had, the, we had pictures and videos from multiple trips to site and are currently working to schedule our next two visits during a blast and immediately following a blast. We are working on putting our data together in such a way that our client and others can see the effect that the blast from the quarry has had on this cave. We plan to share this data with our client who will use it to help ensure that the quarry is environmentally cautious. Our final project that we want to share was a project that we were incredibly excited about, but went very, very different than we expected. We began the year with a group of students who, wanted, who decided they wanted to look at how we could use machine learning to solve problems. Our group decided to focus on erosion because of partnerships we had made in the past. 
We had conversations with a professor from the University of Arkansas, the professor whose research focused on processing images from drones, plugging it into a machine learning model, and getting local data in return. With his help, we jumped into learning everything we could about machine learning and got our first model up and running. Our first set of data was what most people would use when they start. Historic iris data, we plugged into our, we plugged into our model, which we had from jo which we had into Java from Python, and pulled out data. It was incredibly exciting. Feeling comfortable in our ability to pivot around an age limit, we reached out to our friends from the Illinois River Watershed Project to discuss using a machine learning model to identify erosion, and this is where our pivot came in. Erosion is more complicated than we thought. Our partner was excited about our work and excited to help, but, we, but what we envisioned was not something that we thought would be super beneficial. So we pivoted. What, what would work for our client and how could we take what we learned and apply it? We started looking smaller. For years we participated in the stream team program collecting data and analyzing it to check for stream health. And that is something we're very excited to participate in again in a few weeks. In, in addition to our normal sampling work, we plan to get some images. We'll, we'll classify them by hand first, but in the coming weeks, hope to be able to process the images using the criteria we create and begin to train our first model. It's not what we envisioned, and the timeline is certainly not what we hoped for, but we are excited to take our innovative solution and pivot from that and use it. We've done more than we are able to share. We've created animated books for clients to tell our unique folk tales, and we've live streamed conferences for local nonprofits that had to pivot because of COVID, all, and all of our school games and events. We are currently in the middle of telling a story on how nuclear tests in the Marshall Islands caused immigration and affected young, Marshallese young people. We're working to find innovative ways to share that story that will be received by everyone, not just a single group. Our work this year has not been perfect. We've stumbled a lot and we've had to pivot a ton. But we've pushed ourselves to find innovative solutions to our problems, meet our clients' needs, and grow. Hi, we're the students from Northeast Tech Claremore, and we are the Cornerstone Award winner for Community and Collaboration. Hi, I'm Haley Benedict, and I'm a junior. I'm Joshua Martin, and I'm a junior. And I'm Lizzie, and I'm a junior. Between the AM and PM class, we have 23 students. We work with 54 community partners within and outside our county. Altogether, we have 75 projects that we have completed this year. We brainstorm community partners at the beginning of the year. We then create a job request form for them to help, for, to help us know what they want. Each student will pick out two community partners and send a what ease can do for you email to the 46 potential community partners. While we, focus on learning, while we wait on them, we focus on learning software and equipment, study for certification, and help others with their projects. For the finished product, we design, print, and install large-scale vinyl graphics. We get a lot of requests for them because we're very popular in our town. A student named Michaela designed and produced this huge graphic on the right. Or your left, my right. <laughs> it's currently in the Claremore High School Boys Basketball Lounge, and it took roughly three years to complete, but we're only a two-year program. It took multiple students to complete, so it was passed around from student to student. Christina and Faith created window graphics for the American Staff Corps offices in both Claremore and Pryor, Oklahoma, and each panel was about six feet tall, so it took the entire class to install. We also fly our drone to capture footage for marketing and construction all across the county. Blake, our student drone pilot, for the last two years has captured photos and videos for the Rogers County Fair. Justin and Blake are working for the LB Kearns Construction Company, and they've been capturing weekly aerial photos for the entire year. 
We tend to also use ArcGIS to create story maps and to update maps for our local nature reserve. Josh is creating a story map showing the construction process for the new rain garden at RSU. He's also been collecting data for the improved trail maps that we also created about five years ago to replace them. We also help small businesses create logos and apps. Faith Thompson has been working with the Abundant Rain Horse Riding Center to help promote their, not help promote, to help create a hand-drawn logo for them. Joseph and Rudy has, have also been working with them to help create their own app. Recently, our class got a Glowforge. Evan and I had to step up and learn how to use the machine. We engraved heart keychains for TechConnect. Oh wait, I wasn't done. <laughs> Justin is our 3D printer guy, and he has been working with a local candy store, Too Sweet For You, to make keychains. We also help make commercials for museums and local nonprofit businesses. J Jacob has been working with the J.M. Davis Arms and Historical Museum to help promote the Roy Clark story in their Roy Clark exhibit, while Blake, Oliver, and Eli have been working with the Volunteers for Youth to help promote their Healthy Living program. Josh Driscoll has also been working with the Rogers County Conservation District. This website is 20 years old, so he has been helping them update and design their website. And now the website is waiting to be approved by the county commissioners. We also collaborate with the Adult Ed Department of Northeast Tech to help provide free tech help for the elderly in our community. We do Tech Connect for Seniors at least four times a year, where we help them set up Facebook accounts or Instagram accounts, help them learn what Bluetooth is, and all that fun stuff. CarPlay. Car. <laughs> Shelby Scott has been working with our local sports teams to create an animation for their scoreboard. This project is for Vertigris' high school volleyball team. A community partner of for Volunteers for Youth has also been working with Shelby to help promote their PAL program and, help, and try to get her to make animations. <laughs> We need sound. <laughs> okay, try that again. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> just, press, just press, just press, just press. Okay. Hi, my name is Roxanne Bilby, and I work for Volunteers for Youth, which is a nonprofit located in Claremore, Oklahoma. I work for the PAL Plus Mentoring Program, and this semester I had the privilege of working with Shelby, who's creating an animated short for us, for our program, to talk about the benefits of mentoring and the effect that it can have on youth in our community. And this video is going to be so helpful for us when we're advertising the program, when we're recruiting mentors, and then also fundraising. We have really appreciated this opportunity. Hi, my name is Rob. <laughs> okay. And here's the animated short that she has been working on for her. Do we have time for questions? Okay. Is there any questions that you would like to ask us? All right, I want to get you to front. What program do you use for the animation? For the animation, um, I think she uses Adobe, Adobe Animate. Animate. Yeah, Adobe Animate. Okay, uh, over there. Hold on, let me get you my. <laughs> Can you say that one more time? It was kind of hard to hear you. How many community partners have you guys had? We have hit 54 community partners, all together. Most successful project. Probably all the graphic design yeah. jobs, because we have so many of those. We do a lot. Okay. This one, your school again. Our school. Um, we're from Oklahoma, Northeast Tech, Claremore. If you kind of know, we're like 30 minutes from Tulsa. Uh, Northeast, what? Northeast Tech Claremore Campus. 
Yes, if you want to look us up. <laughs> um, can we get a photo with y'all, please? Oh, Thank you, Greg. Uh, yeah. Okay. After, after, yeah. Okay. Are there any more questions? Yes. Is there any like, uh, efficient strategy for like, managing your time, like in case you guys run out of time? Like, how do you manage so many projects in such a short amount of time? It takes more than, like, some projects will go on for another year. So some of us, this is a two-year program. So I'm a first year, we're all first year students, and we'll be coming back next year. So uh, how we manage some projects is just, yeah, so some of it we work on by ourselves, or if we need to get a project, like, out the door, like, oh, this is coming out next week, then we'll help each other out, and it'll, we'll get it out the door. Since most of us have multiple projects going on at a time, it tends to just be prioritizing whatever needs to get done the quickest and the most important. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, do you ever start projects and then just not finish them? <laughs> I think I've had one project that I haven't got qu quite finished. I am working on blueprints for my classroom to help expand um, the layout because we want more students in our class. Uh, and I'm not quite finished with that yet, but I'm sure I'm going to get it done soon. <laughs> Most projects that don't end up getting finished is usually because the client uh, stops responding on their end. That too. We've had a lot of those. <laughs> that happens pretty often. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Does your EAST program have a website on your school's um, platform? You no, ma'am. No. So, so we, instead of being at each individual high school or elementary school or middle school, uh, we're actually at a technical college, technically. So we take, imagine like how some high schools go to concurrent classes, it's very similar to that. So you apply as a sophomore and then come your junior and senior year or your senior in a 13th year. Like I said, when I said AM and PM class, uh, me and Josh are AM students, so we go from eight o'clock 8 30 to 11 30 and then after in the afternoon we go to our regular high school and lizzie is a pm student so she goes from 12 30 to 3 30 yes. i'm pretty sure and so that's how our program works also we do have a facebook though we do. yes we that. do have a facebook <laughs> <laughs> to answer that other question what east at northeast tech east. you can find our facebook page anybody else your class are every we are every school day, so school. five days a week. Yes. <laughs> and then I, guess that's it. I guess we're done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.